from the Fox 5 studios, this is the Reb Zone Sports Show. Sponsored by Hennison Hate. Help is here. And by Flowing Tide Pub. I want to say thank you to the city of Vegas. I want to say thank you to uh, all the work that our marketing staff did um, in our athletic department. It took everybody to pull off an environment like tonight. And uh, I, I am so from the bottom of my heart and our team, uh, what a great atmosphere that was. If we'll go and play and continue to improve through the month of November with the opportunity to finish 10 and two, you know, and then we're, we're gonna get a little help around the conference probably to get in the championship game. Um, but that has always been one of our goals is to compete and win a championship, conference championship. And then now the way that, that things set up in college football, if you do that, um, there's a number of other doors that open up and you know, time will tell. There's gonna be a lot of ball played here in the next five weeks and see what plays out. Broncos, good pass rush here. Williams, deep shot, and it is caught! Welcome into the Red Zone. The college football atmosphere in Las Vegas is at an all-time high. Best UNLV football atmosphere we've seen in this city. The Rebels played in front of a program record 42,228 fans at Allegiant Stadium. Despite the loss against Boise State, UNLV's 2024 goals are still ahead of them. Coach Odom in studio, great to have you here. Coach, I know Friday night stung for your guys, but you told me walking into the studio, you guys are ready to bounce back. Yeah, what a, what a great night for college football. And, and nationally, that stage um, was the envy of a lot of people and programs. And again, I'm so thankful for the city on the outpouring of support that they've given us since we've been here and how we've built it now through 22 games or however many we've been together. Um, you know, in the athletic department on the on the process of putting together uh, what was a great environment for our kids. And man, I wish uh, we could have got that win, uh, not only for our program, but but for the city, but, but we're gonna bounce back. We had a lot of opportunities that are ahead of us. Our guys are hungry to go finish the right way and, and we'll do our part. Yeah, I wanna talk about the record attendance, 42,228 at Allegiant Stadium. Coach, running out the tunnel on Friday night, what did you feel in that environment? Well, you could feel it, in my opinion, really in the on campus throughout the week. There are a number of different events going on. Uh, you could feel it when we pulled up to the stadium you know, the tailgating scene, you could see that the people were there early and then the buzz of the stadium. Uh, what a great feeling that was for our kids. And, you know, when, when Harp and I started talking about this job, we talked openly about what this could become. And that was the vision of, of where we're going and how we're gonna get there. And uh, certainly that won't be the last time that we have 40,000 plus in our stadium. Um, we're gonna continue to build a program where that becomes um, the norm. Very exciting to see UNLV football on a national stage. 11 of their 12 games on national TV, and it's only going to grow here in Las Vegas. But well, let's head out to a rockin' Allegiant Stadium on Friday night. Like we mentioned, a historic night for college football in Las Vegas. The Rebels and Broncos taking the field in front of a record crowd, 42,228. For the rematch of the 2023 Mountain West Championship, these guys are ready to roll, and so was the crowd and UNLV's defense comes out, lights out, play number one of the ball game and Heisman front runner meets Fisher K Mac. UNLV comes out punching in this heavyweight matchup. The Rebels would keep the Broncos out of the end zone on the first drive and Boise State settles for a 37 yard field goal, jumping on the board first. Next drive, second and 10, here comes Hodge Malik Wheels. Hodge Malik Williams rushes for 71 yards on this play, taking the ball down to the three yard line. Williams is showing off his speed. UNLV's drive would end with the two-time Mountain West Special Teams Player of the Week, Caden Chidzin, knocking down a 28-yarder. And the Rebels and Broncos are tied up at three on Friday night. Next UNLV possession, Williams shows off his arm strength, airing it out 50 yards to Casey Kane. Longest catch of the season for the Texas transfer, who's been a playmaker for the Rebels all season long. It's third and goal at the nine-yard line. Coach Marion 
dialing up another touchdown pass to Kaleo Balungai. The Rebels jump in front 10 to 3 after one. And the Broncos, they keep fighting on Friday night. Second quarter after adding another field goal on the board, Boise State finds the end zone on this play. Maddox Madsen scrambles up the middle and Boise State steals the lead 13 to 10. We got a ball game at Allegiant Stadium, 143 left in the first half. And Hodge Millick Williams is picked off on third down by Andrew Simpson. Simpson takes the ball down to the seven yard line and the Broncos are in the red zone. Boise State scores another touchdown before the half, a short pass to Matt Lauder, and the Broncos take a 20 to 10 lead at the half. UNLV gets the ball to start the second half and come out with some juice. The confidence is beaming out of Hodge Malik Williams rolling into the end zone for his fifth rushing touchdown this season. The Rebels trail the Broncos 20 to 17 and you have Lindy LaRock's daughter giving out knucks on the sidelines. After another Boise State field goal, the Rebels were lighting it up on third down. Madsen's pass to Ashton Genty is broken up by Alexander Whitmore and Mike Shear's energy is unmatched, juicing up his guy after several big third down stops against the Broncos, the Rebels would score on the next drive play of the ball game. Williams throws a dime to Jaden Bradley. His first UNLV touchdown is the highlight of the night and the Rebels are dancing into the fourth quarter with a 24 to 23 lead. UNLV's defense doing everything they can to stop Ashton Jensi, but the Heisman front runner rolls into the end zone from one yard out. The Broncos would go for two but fail to convert and Boise State retakes their 29 to 24 lead and a whole penalty on Tony Grimes would allow Boise State to run out the clock and hang on to their lead down the stretch of the fourth quarter and the Rebels were able to slow down Genty on Friday night. The junior running back finished with 128 yards on 33 carries but the Rebels fall short in this championship rematch to Boise State 29 to 24. Jackson Woodard giving out hugs but also fell down to his knees at the at the very end of that game and coach you told me your guys were gutted. How motivated are they to bounce back in the win column you know we put a lot into that game not not you know just specific that game but this season all the things from the rebuild and the start over after the bowl game last year certainly we had this game circled yeah. we understood how big it would be if we did our part leading up to this game and you know Boise had to do the same thing and I thought it was two heavyweight teams going at each other what a terrific game you hate to end up on the short side of that but um, you know and the the thing about our team if I, I would be really bothered if if we weren't hurt after the game, mm -hmm. but certainly we were. Um, that sign of competitive nature and spirit of your team, when you pour something for months and months into it and you come up short, it's devastating. But then how are you going to be as a competitor? You know, we've got a rebound. Now we've got a bye week, four games coming up, and we control what ends up happening to us after the postseason. Yeah, my phone is full of texts right now of Rebel fans just ready to get back in that win column. But talk about a guy that was prepared for the big moment. Hodge Malik Williams, number six, really showing off his legs in this game. Uh, five rushing touchdowns this season. Coach, what are you seeing from Williams being able to extend plays? Well, I think the, the thing with Hodge and his reads, he's getting better and better each week. You know, there were times that they were taking that away uh, but he made the right read almost every single snap whether it's the run the handoff or the, or the pass out of it in, in the way that our scheme is designed so he's getting better and better he's certainly uh, he's got great speed and he's very elusive and you look at the way he finishes runs um, he's punishing in the way he's running with the football we got to be smart with that but also he's got the ability now that defenses they have to account for him in every aspect of the game. Yeah, number six just continues to improve and get better each week. Well, coming up next, the Rebels were making play after play on Friday night to bottle up this guy, number two Heisman front runner Ashton Genty. We'll take a look at how UNLV's defense came out with a punch against the Broncos in the Mountain West Championship rematch. And speaking of defense, number seven has been in the, na in the national headlines all season long. The UNLV captain is having a historic season and received a special phone call from Archie Manning this week. We'll share more on Woodard making history at UNLV. It is my distinct pleasure to inform you that you are one of the 2024 NFL Scholar Athletes. Congratulations, Jackson. Man, that's awesome. Thank you so much. means a lot. It's my understanding. I don't believe you and LB's ever had uh, one of the Scholar Athletes before, so what a just what a great honor for you to be the first. I look forward to seeing you in Las Vegas in December, okay? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Hello. 
Very cool moment this week for Jackson Woodard becoming UNLV's first finalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy Award. Woodard is one of 16 finalists and will receive an $18,000 postgraduate scholarship as a member of the 2024 National Football Foundation National Athlete Class. Not only is he succeeding on the football field, but off the football field, a 3.7 GPA coach. Uh, just one of the best guys in your building, really. I learned from Coach Fish. He's one of the first guys in the building. Really he takes care of his academics. How cool was that phone call from Archie Manning? Well, it's tremendous and what a great honor for Jackson. You know, last year he was UNLV's first ever academic All-American, followed it up with that award and his leadership is, is tremendous in our building, has been from the day he arrived. Uh, I would say he's the heart and soul of our team um, um, uh, with a, a number of other guys, but every single day the consistency he has. And then I've known the Manning family for, for a number of years and to be able to reach out to Archie and, and set that call up. <laughs> yeah. That meant a lot on both sides and was so, so excited for Jackson to get that award. Great representative of our program and tremendous for UNLV. You know, I talk all the time in recruiting, anything that you want to accomplish as a football student athlete, you can get done at UNLV. And now the validation on the things that we've done proves to be true. Yeah, he's leading the way at UNLV and really sharpening other leaders on the football field too. But I want to talk about the defensive performance you saw from your guys on Friday night, really containing number two. I mean, play number one of the ball game and Fisher came back is right there for the tackle for a loss. Talk about the effort you saw from Mike Shears guys. Well, I think number one, it started you know schematically on the plan that Mike put together for our defense and then them understanding being able to teach it as a staff and then them going and executing it. I thought they played uh, really solid against what I think is the best player in college football and one of the best offenses. I've got a lot of respect for Dirk Cutter, who's their offensive coordinator. He's been really good for a number of years. And I thought, you know, there were things that you always want to correct and get better, but run defense-wise against what they were doing, I thought that our guys uh, made them earn every single yard, and that was good to see. Just so many third down stops like this one right here on Friday night. Talk about the confidence your defense is playing with coming off a big second half against Oregon State. Well, the thing you look at for us to have success on third downs, we need to be really good on first and second downs to get them behind the sticks, and then your third and medium to third and long, and then you can dial up a number of different pressures. Our defensive line is playing better right now, winning some one-on-one -on -one matchups. Backside in uh, coverage wise, we're getting a little more aggressive in the things that we're doing. So I think we're hitting our stride at the right time. Uh, we've got we've got areas we've still got to improve on, but but we're getting better every single week on that side. Yeah, I know the talk was about Ashton Gency, but my talk this week is about all the defensive playmakers for UNLV. Well, Hodge Malik Williams' mom, Beverly, has been going to her son's football games since he was five years old. She flies from Atlanta across the country every week to be there for her number six. We're talking to Hodge Malik Williams next on the confidence that he plays with and his early, early mornings with Coach Fish in the weight room. The Red Zone will be right back. Hodge wants to be a great football player. And if you have that, then you have the makings to reach your potential and probably do some things you never thought you could. And that started for Hodge on January 16th. He had bought into everything that we, we put on his plate, sometimes a little overwhelmed with it, but he figured it all out, he managed it, and you know he probably wouldn't want anybody to hear it, but Hodge meets me in here every morning at 4.15 a.m. And we have a routine that he does. We talk football, we talk life, we talk his personal needs, you know, as a football player. Uh, everything is fair game. And I really enjoy those types of relationships with the guys that are ultimate team guys and will do anything that they need to do as an individual to be at their best. Because number one, they want to be successful, but the last thing they would ever want to do is let their teammates down. And he's. He's the epitome of that. Williams calls UNLV's weight room the sanctuary, where he trains his body and his mind. The sixth year senior understands he's representing a program and a community on a national stage. To ensure that he's performing at his peak, he takes care of his mental health. Mental health is, is very essential to your day-to-day -day basis on how you function. You know, we put a lot on ourselves to go out and, and play and win. You know, when you don't do it, you feel like, oh man, what happened, what's going on? So to answer your question, you know, day to day after I'm done with my routine, what's also in my routine is reading. I feel like that's one way to calm your nerves and kind of, and I read out loud too, so I can 
do better with you know my interviews and whatnot and not stutter over my words that's one way I practice that but reading helps soothe me you know calms me down I like to meditate um, and getting up early too you know I feel like that's clear at four whether I'm getting pointers on my mental toughness with Coach Fish or we just it's just the morning like take your time come see me if you need me of just getting your mind right because at the end of the day you got a job to do. Surrounded by great coaches and talented players Hodge Malik Williams has been able to succeed when his number was called. One player that has molded him into a great leader at UNLV is Jackson Woodard. Everyone knows the story of, of me being quarterback two at the beginning of the season. Um, and we were close prior to, um, as far as because I was here, we, he needed help with leadership, you know what I mean? And he felt like, hey, I need a voice on offense. And I was like, man, that's what I came here for, you know, leading is my deal. Um, and we led in a way that, you know, oh yeah, I need that. You know, it's, and we just kind of piggybacked off of each other. You know, hey, you get the break, you break the huddle down this time. Okay, I got it right here. Um, and that's just kind of how we did it. But he seen how my work ethic, and he respected that because at the end, when you transfer, you're a question mark. Like, is this guy really who they say he is? How is he going to come out every day? So I learned a lot on how to move here because he's been here before with these coaches. So I learned a lot from him. Um, and then, you know, like I said, when I became quarterback two, I was really low, and he was a guy that helped me get out of my, my storm. You know what I mean? You could always respect men that, that, you know, they got their own stuff on their plate, but he continued to talk to me, hey, I got your back, dog, keep your head up, you know, I'm gonna make this play. And I remember Houston game, you know, he went crazy, and he would yell at me on the sideline, and I'm like, man, I'm not even playing, you know, and it, but it did something to me, because I was in my own funk, I'm not touching the ball, I'm not where I want to be, but somehow he, he kept me in the game, like showed me the passion. So, you know, that's what the love is, you know, genuinely through a guy that can look out for you when you need him the most. This season, Williams has showed off his arm strength and has become a weapon in the run game, scoring five rushing touchdowns in the past five games. His confidence comes from his teammates and his mom being in the stands at every game. Wherever we did, she was there cheering us on, you know, whether it was school, on the road, graduation, basketball, football, track, whatever the sport was, she was there and made sure she, we seen that she had our love, had love and support for whatever we did and it was awesome. So now, you know, on this level, it's no different. You know, she always had the pom-pom in her jersey, screaming, you know, and saying those same sayings that she's been saying for years, so it's, it's awesome. Oh, this is why this show is so special to get to learn more about Hodge Malik Williams and his mom. Number six, just an amazing man on the field and off the field coach. Yeah, from the day he stepped into our building, um, his, his leadership, his personality has been infectious. His mom came on the recruiting trip with him and, and she said, Coach, you're going to hear me in the stands now. <laughs> and she, what a wonderful woman. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the relationship that they have was, was fun to to get to know them on, on how they are built. And then, you know, you talk about the time that Hodge puts in as a quarterback. You know, every great player that I've ever been around, they have a process. And every day they're driven on what makes them and gives them the chance to be successful. And Hodge has been that, you know, he's an early morning guy in the weight room. The flexibility, the recovery, even the conversation I think that he has with Coach Fish, I think that gets him in a really good mind space to be ready to go lead this team. And, and uh, we're certainly excited about what he's done and what he's gonna do through the month of November. Yeah, incredible to hear from Coach Fish that he's in the facility at 4.15 a.m. stretching with the guys in there and ready to lead the Rebels. Well, the Rebels pass this trophy every single day in the Fertitta Football Complex. UNLV looking to defend the Golden Pineapple when they travel to Hawaii after their bye week. We'll break down the Rainbow Warriors season and how Coach Odom plans to win his second straight Ninth Island Showdown. Welcome back to the Reb Zone. The 6-2 and two Rebels are on a bye this week. Coach Odom says this bye comes at a perfect time for his guys trying to heal up and get healthy for one of the most anticipated games of the season, the annual Ninth Island Showdown. The Rebels dominated UH at Allegiant Stadium last year, 44-20, to and plan to do so again on the road next Saturday for a 6 p.m. kickoff in Honolulu. And Coach, I learned on our way into the studio, this will be your first trip to Hawaii, but you've already faced the Rainbow Warriors last year what have you learned about this team well I know that that you know they give a trophy away for a reason yeah. obviously historically the the matchup on how important that is and for us you know we're playing for something bigger than ourselves again we understand that um, it will be a challenge they seem to over the last couple of years since I've studied them 
this year and last, they are a much better home playing team. Mm -hmm. And you know, what are the reasons for that? We're, we're also a really good on the road team on the way that we've played and we've prepared. So um, we'll have a great week. We, we need this week, as, as you mentioned, the bye week leading into it, the opportunity to heal up, to get three or four bonus practices on Hawaii will be important for uh, our success. And then once we get into game week and the travel, um, we've got a really good plan for what that looks like to get our guys in position to go play well. UNLV looking to stay undefeated on the road and improve to 5-0 next week in Hawaii. And like we talked about the bye week, Coach, how important is the recovery with Coach Fish in your building? Yeah, we'll do a number of things. You know, the, the thing that we've done in, with Coach Fish's direction is we've gotten stronger as a football team throughout the year. We're, we're not in the business of just maintaining our strength levels. So we've got a group, a developmental group that lifts three times a week. They've set PRs in, in all four major lifts that we do and measure the numbers on those. Our travel team has done the same thing. So uh, it'll be a great week for us from a rest and recovery, but also uh, the practice and the bonus that we get in, not only in the weight room, but on the field. Awesome, and a great time to be in the weight room with Coach Fish. It's so fun on the Red Zone getting to meet with these players and sit down with these coaches. But a big thank you to Rebel Nation. We'll see you next Sunday on the Red Zone.